it made me think of the, the one thing that this video is doing most effectively is making connections. Because we had this dialogue right here because we watched the video. And I think this type of dialogue probably happened in many classrooms and households. And that level of effectiveness, when you can, that, that should be the first goal you should have when thinking of a communication strategy as part of your environmental education programs, is to connect with your audience, to connect with others. Because if you can achieve that, you, you, you've taken the, the, the first step and the most difficult step. Once you establish connection, then the flow of information back and forth becomes a lot easier. So, um, that, to me, that's the message I take home with me. Is there anything else that anybody wants to share about this?
this activity uh, and move forward to the next the next thing we have so that you can go home safely by <clears throat> just reminding you um, that just like this video is basically saying that everybody that each of us can do something wherever we are as consumers as, as citizens or even in the companies we work even if we work for the companies that produce the products that uh, that are part of the problem. We can all be a part of the solution. The same thing that I think that we've been trying to say for the last couple of days, we can all be communicators, we can all be storytellers, and, it's in, and we can all help um, connect others everywhere. So don't be afraid to do EE outside the box, to do EE everywhere and to do EE by trying new ways to communicate. Um, just give it a try. And if you fail, you adjust, you learn from the experience, and you try something new. Um, you'll see we're not afraid later when we demonstrate something that, um, you'll see, something that we have prepared for you for the end of the workshop. Um, thank you. And uh, I'm going to pass it on to you. Um,
describe the method that you're going to use to achieve your desired outcome. So let's see, I want to ask for the day off on Friday. That's my desired outcome. I know I want to talk to my boss. The method I might use is, hmm, maybe I'll go to my boss and say, you know, I've been in this workshop for two days, 16 hour days, I've been working really hard, you know, I'm thinking in my mind all the, all the reasons what, you know, how I'm going to frame everything before I get to my ask. You know, just, that's a really simplified version, but what are you going to do? What method are you going to use to get to your ask? And then number five, the very last thing is, how are you going to know that you are successful? How are you going to measure success? And in that simple example, it's, did I get the day off or not? So that's just a really simplified way of, of going through a process of thinking about what the challenge is, thinking about what the desired outcome is, who your audience is that has the ability to affect your outcome, thinking about what method you would use to get to your desired outcome, and lastly, how will you know if you get there, okay? Super, super fast going through it, very much um, the simplified version of the smart chart. Now the example I wanted to show with you guys, or share with you all, is about this global environmental education course that Cornell taught earlier this year. Uh, I don't know if others in this class participated. It was called Global EE, Transdisciplinary Approaches to Addressing Wicked Problems. Did anybody take this class? Okay, good, I see a few hands. Wonderful, that's great. So the purpose of this class was to bring an entire global community together to share ideas and talk about how we might address really, really difficult, wicked environmental problems by taking a transdisciplinary approach to environmental education. So what can we do or what can we learn from different fields, from the fields of psychology, from the fields of communication, um, from the fields of forestry and conservation. So we looked at um, 10 or 13 different fields and thought about what can we learn from all those different fields to help us address really difficult challenges like climate change, um, for example. So our main communication challenge, there we had several communication challenges, but just to give you some background, there were over 2,000 students in this online course from over 140 different countries. We had 40 guest lecturers. And can anyone just come up with one example of what communication problem we might have with a group that large and diverse? Timing. Timing? Yes. What, did, what do you mean by timing? Can you elaborate? Right, so we've got time zones. Yeah, we've got time zones. So we can maybe have the different times to talk with. Me. Maybe if I have to talk in, in the midnight of the Thai day, but probably in the earlier or mid, in the noon in the U.S. Day. So Absolutely. Across the, right. So um, we have logistical the challenge of yeah. how do we do synchronous versus asynchronous work when we've got multiple time zones. Absolutely. That was just one of our smaller challenges. Another challenge we had is that we had lots of different languages represented, but the course content was entirely in English. So, and we thought, gosh, there were 40 guest lecturers, but really only five people working full-time on this course. How are we going to support over two, maybe 200 students and give them that one-on-one -on -one attention, immediate feedback? How do we respond to their discussion board questions? How do we do all that for 2,200 students? So we've got a volunteer here in the way back of the room um, who's going to talk a little bit about how she helped us address that challenge. Uh, we had, let's see, 41 different local groups all over the world that met either in person 
or online to discuss the course content. And these were our community leaders that acted kind of like TAs that helped us out, not only um, explain the content and translate the content, but also helped us provide that one-on-one -on -one support. And they were the liaisons that helped us connect with the students directly, since we couldn't do that with our students here in Taipei. So if you could come down, if you wanted to share with us a little bit about what your community group did, um, and to talk about the course content, what platforms did you use, what were your main challenges, and how did you address them? Okay. Thank you. Should I? Oh, you can come down, question.我是预期目前是在台师大的教所做气候变迁教育方面的博士后研究协助大家学习民间社会的特性也不一样所以我们有机会去分享虽然好像看起来所以当我们在学那些概念的时候有稍微讲一下我点就是关心环境问题的教育者或者是自然资源领域的工作者那我怎么去解决这个问题呢大概就是本来那个目标整个 所以我们的做法就是因为我们的做法就是因为我们的做法就是因为我们的做法就是因为我们的做法就是因为我们的做法就是因为我们的做法就是因为我们的做法就是因为我们的做法就是因为我们的做法就是因为我们的做法就是因
expert 的 certificate， <笑> we cannot do that， too difficult。所以这个是呃比较大，这也是其中一个挑战。然后那个方法呢，解决这些问题的方法就是呃，我觉得第一个就是尽量请大家去分享他关怀的环境议题。每个礼拜呢，我们大概会请两个伙伴来分享他的议题，然后其他人就给一些呃回馈或 feedback。然后这样子做了大概三次以后，我们试着去找一个大家都共同关心的东西去去讨论。但这个部分呃有尝试，但还没有办法做到很成功。所以呃第二个第二个方法就是尽可能的把大家预约多多次一点，就比方说我们第一次会议就开两次。配合不同的时间，所以事实上，呃，假设不一定是要四次开会的话，我们基本上可能会开到五次、六次、七次都有可能。就是我们就用这种方法来解决呃时间上时差上的问题。那至于我们怎么去评估说我们呃这个 community 是不是 successful 或者是不够做的不够好，我觉得诶从 outcome 来看，至少每一个人都奋力的。读了那个 material， 然后回答那个 homework， 然后呃拿到那个 certificate， 这算成功。然后第二个成功的指标是这个 Facebook 还在，那大家也会时不时的丢一些他们国内呃有趣的环境教育的议题资讯，或者是教材，或者是 conference， 跟大家分享。那也会互相邀请彼此去去大家的那个 conference。哦，很大的呃有一个有趣的挑战，我刚忘了说就是那个。中国不能用 Facebook， they cannot use Facebook. Yeah, so there will be some te technical problems. So, yeah. So, this part we, they may have to fall back. That, otherwise, we will have to find another way to solve social media problem. Okay, that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I just wanted to um, to give her a chance to share what how she made that really complicated course content with so many different topics and so many different lectures. One way that um, all the different strategies she used to make it more relevant for people in her group. So thank you for sharing that. Um, I'm guessing that the energy is getting kind of low, <laughs> but we need to move on. So. Again, I want to let you guys know that we're going to share this framework with you. Please continue to um, work on your communication messages. And this example with the course is that we're, we're finding communication challenges in, in our everyday experiences, in our work, in school. It translates, we can transfer this knowledge to other areas of our lives because we're constantly communicating with people every day. And I think I'm going to end there. But thank you, Yuchi, for sharing that experience. Are we going to do um, one more final, final example of an innovative strategy for motivating people to take environmental action? And this example uses music and dance. And so Ian is going to lead us with Aliza and Pepe and myself. And here you go. Keep going. No, keep going. Okay. So, I think what we're going to do is we're going to actually, if you guys don't mind joining me on stage okay. up here, everybody's going to have to get up out of their seats and come over here. You don't need to bring your notebooks. Don't be too excited. No. <laughs>
and he works for something called the California Conservation Corps. The California Conservation Corps is largely people who have had something happen where they need to do community service. So it's usually some sort of minor infraction, right? So, so they've done some, broken some sort of minor law. So one way that um, we deal with this is we have them actually do service in the environment, that's it. Right. And so he managed to actually reach out to this group and start them loving the environment by connecting with them through dance. So he managed to get this dance so popular that you'll see the examples he has are from Romania, they're from uh, Washington, D.C. He was asked to do it with, I think he met the president, is that right? Obama. Oh yeah, Michelle Obama, Obama. Obama, who's famous for dancing, Michelle Obama. So now we will join the ranks. However, there is one problem. This dance is supposed to be done outside, so that means all of you will need to go back to your sites and after, do after the, after the typhoon, after. when it's beautiful weather or slightly raining, and do this dance outside and add your video. Yes. Oh yeah, with a group of people, of course. Okay, so I think it's probably easier if I explain because there's translation involved. Okay, so there are three main parts of this dance. The first is the bear, okay? So imagine a bear, right, rubbing his back, scratching his back, okay, and it goes like this. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Beautiful, oh my god, they're great, right? Okay, awesome, that's it. The next is the vulture. The vulture is like the condor. It's a turkey vulture. So you do turkey vulture, turkey vulture, turkey vulture, turkey vulture, turkey vulture. Beautiful, that's it. The next part is ground squirrel, which is one of my favorite animals. Um, so the ground squirrel is ground squirrel, ground squirrel. Ground squirrel, ground squirrel, ground squirrel, ground squirrel, ground squirrel. That's it. You've just done all the parts. Then after that, it's freestyle. Okay. Whatever you want to do. Whatever you want to do. Okay. That, that's it. Okay. So Are we ready? So I'll let you watch the video with him explaining it so you can see some of the different groups that are doing it. And then he, there's an opportunity for all of us to dance it together. Okay four parts. So the first part is the black bear. So just imagine a black bear scratching his back against a um, tree or something, and so it'd be going like this again, be going, uh, 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 uh. So one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, that's the black bear, okay? <laughs> So you do this turkey vulture, you spread your wings like you're gonna soar, okay, and you're hopping one, two, and you're hopping one, two, you're turning one, two, okay, it's a turkey vulture. Hey. Oh, yeah. Do it. Yeah. 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 Parks. 
So just get out there and enjoy it. Thank you all you Bob Blitz dancers. I want to see your Bob Blitz dance. Record it with your friends outdoors. Title Bob Blitz dance and put it on YouTube. Let's see some Bob Blitz dances from all over the world. Hey, uh, okay, this is it, ready? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah very sure. Thank you. 